The gold in them thar hills may be long gone, but Ruby, Arizona is still a gem of a ghost town. This once bustling mining camp is way off the beaten path and now boasts just one permanent resident. I'm off the grid, out of the system. There's no traffic noise or barking dogs or noisy neighbors to deal with here. Surrounded by the natural world. Sundog is the caretaker for this privately owned town south of Aravaca. He enjoys the solitude, but welcomes the occasional visitor. An old Mexican man came last summer and said that his, his father's brother had built the jailhouse door there. He was just an itinerant blacksmith going from camp to camp doing little jobs. So yeah, people show up here that, uh, that were associated with the place. And because I'm here all the time, I'm the one that gets to talk to them. And you know, sometimes I take their name or and I say, well, Ty, I would love to talk to you. Grover Duff was the mine superintendent and a very uh, a tough taskmaster. Taya Cahoon is also a Ruby enthusiast and an official tour guide. When I've done oral histories with people who lived here, if I mention the name Duff, you can almost see the hair stand up on the back of their neck because they remember what he was like. Like many historic buildings downtown, the former Old Market Inn was looking for a second chance. On my way to work, I would drive by this building every day, and I just saw the glass storefront, and I saw the exposed brick, and I fell in love with it. Then, local artist Carly Quinn passed by. And I saw this space, and I thought, I have to have it. <laughs> Today, the space on North 6th Avenue is studio, workshop, and gallery space for Quinn and silkscreen artist and business partner, Greg Wilson. We worked it out. Taking one more step toward a life ambition. Ever since I graduated college, I thought to myself, I don't want to work for someone else, and I don't want to work behind a computer, because I have a degree in illustration and graphic design and website design. And that was just a means for me to make enough money to be able to do what I love, which is making tile. I used to like to um, draw my own coloring books <laughs> and then color them myself, yeah. I make hand glazed tile murals. I take six inch terracotta tile that are completely blank and I put my designs on them and I fire them in my kiln and Usually I frame them, but a lot of times people take them home for custom tile installation. For this young entrepreneur, giving up a lucrative job in graphic design to become a full-time independent artist wasn't even close to a difficult decision. Yeah, there was about 30. 30 cowboys over there, really good hands. Jay Dussard and his horse Spud are spending the day with some buckaroo friends and ranch caretakers Don and Rosemary Pock. It's been said that cowboys are a dying breed. I, I, I don't exactly agree with that. They're still out there and I'm very grateful that they are. He admits that ranches are disappearing and he wishes that more people would understand and appreciate their importance. For one thing, ranch country is probably the best insurance policy for, for maintaining open space, open country. And that, that benefits everybody's soul, even urbanites. Jay Dussard has made it his mission to make sure cowboys don't disappear. Oh, this will work fine. Jay Dussart is a photographer. His book, The North American Cowboy, A Portrait, introduced us to the great faces of the West, faces that show hard work and true character. My favorite people to photograph are, are the working cowboys. They're the people that, that have put up with me on many, many occasions because I'm really attracted to the landscape they operate in and I'm really attracted to, to what they do. But don't expect to see color and pageantry. Dussard works exclusively in black and white. Yeah, for this I use Kodak T-Max 400.
Hi, I'm Kate Wyslinski. Welcome to The Hub. There's a vibe going on with everything around us. The Hub started really as an American classic kind of menu. I wanted food that you eat with your grandparents. It reminds you of Sunday dinner. I was going for an emotional chord right there. The Hub for me is about flavorful, not fancy food. It feels like I'm a citizen of downtown, and I didn't know I was really going to feel like that. Okay, absolutely. This is our chocolate pudding. Bye, Teo. How was the ice cream? Good? I also felt like ice cream was definitely needed after Thrifty's left. There wasn't really an ice creamery downtown. The thing for me doing ice cream also is 50% um, classic flavors and 50% pushing the envelope on the foodie side of things. So, you know, we have a bourbon almond brittle, we have a, a bacon scotch that's coming out, pistachio fig, but we also have the Rocky Road, um, the vanilla, the chocolate, and that kind of stuff. Criterium is a fixed loop race that the racers go round and round. Um, our course is one kilometer or about a half a mile. And so what makes it different is that it's all about the spectators. As you can see, I keep looking and distracted because I can see the cyclists going by. And that is exactly how it, the experience is as, as a spectator. This is a pack of cyclists going at 40 miles an hour at times, and we, it's all about bringing people to an urban center to experience the excitement. And it's terrifying if you are a new rider and you're just starting off as a racer. It is exhilarating if you are a seasoned pro. This is exactly the kind of race you're looking for.